Hi, I'm Lisa Prather, and welcome to The Voice of Health with our host, Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where lives are changed every day through the natural approach to health care. Well, today's show is about how 99% of us need a better thyroid. Dr. Prather, why do you say that? It's uh, such a common problem. Uh, you know, really there is just so many problems with the thyroid. When when you talk about the thyroid, uh, 12% of the American population has thyroid disease. Mm. You know, and that's something that, that uh, is put out by the American Thyroid Association. Uh, 60% of the people don't actually realize that they have a thyroid disease. But then when we're testing people on how many people have a properly functioning thyroid that come into our office, it's mainly maybe one, maybe two come in every mm, three to six months, Mm. actually have a properly functioning thyroid. So basically all of our patients who come in have their thyroid not functioning properly. Interesting. So it's it's a when you said twelve percent, it seemed like it should be higher Just, for the disease. Yeah. Yes. Now that's that's that would be where they could be classified as a disease. Okay. Then, of course, one of the things that we deal with in our office is homeostasis. Mm-hmm. So you have the disease model, which is the normal allopathic uh, uh, ways of looking at the uh, healthcare. And then we look at it structure functionally, where homeostasis is is what is important. Mm-hmm. And homeostasis is a balance, and there's a balance in the thyroid that should be achieved, which you can uh, determine, uh, you know, exactly where that should be. And the people who have a normally balanced thyroid homeostasis is probably less than one uh, percent wow. of the population. So dealing with the thyroid is is a, a very common type of th- type of thing. Uh, everybody that basically comes in here, with a very few exceptions, uh, have thyroid problems. And the older that you get, the more likely you have of having thyroid issues. When you start to get over sixty five, you know, then you know it, it's almost everybody. And then the rates of thyroid disease actually increase. Uh, women have uh, five times more likely to have thyroid disease than men, mm. and it's almost guaranteed that uh, most women are going to have a poorly functioning thyroid, and usually it's worse than men. Hmm. Interesting. Well, the thyroid, you had thyroid issues as I did. Um, a young adult, and that's why you really got into the type of health care that you do now, correct? That was the thing that motivated me. I had Graves' disease. Which is? Which good. is a autoimmune disease of the thyroid. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a hyperactive thyroid. Uh, it was causing me a tremendous amount of health problems. Uh, it had thrown off uh, many of the different types of functions of my body. Uh, it uh, made it hard to think. Uh, it caused high blood pressure rapid pulse, um, heart problems. It also caused uh, premature grain in my hair. Mm. Uh, It also uh, caused a a lot of weight loss. Uh, It also caused the calcium levels in my body to be off. There was some uh, calcification of of some of my soft tissue. So it it was a a condition that was uh, uh, very poorly handled and uh, wasn't uh, responding well to traditional medicine. And you had to quit sports at the time? And I had to quit sports. It affected my uh, schooling. Mm-hmm. Uh, thought process, uh, I thought I was going a little crazy. Mm. Uh, the thyroid has a huge effect on so many different aspects of one's life. Uh, people don't realize it. Mm-hmm. Uh, weaken the immune system so that uh, a lot of in- infections uh, I would get that I normally wouldn't have. So, you know, those are the types of things that that can be kicked off by that. And I know, you know, when you consult with patients and and something that you say a lot is, I understand, because sure. you felt at one point, you know, it felt like you were dying. Uh, actually, I was. Mm-hmm. So, yes, uh, I have an understanding. And then also, you know, I understand the frustration that people have on looking for uh, the proper type of health care mm-hmm. to get better. 
you know, the, the, um, the treatment options and the end results of those treatment options weren't things I really wanted to do. So I sought out a more structure function type of care and, and was able to get that uh, under control mm-hmm. rather quickly. Well, let's talk about, um, I think this is a funny question, but <laughs> what is a thyroid, you know? Yeah, that Have you is, ever seen one? Uh, yes, actually, I have. Really? Uh, I've seen what operations like? on that. <laughs> well, it, they're, they're kind of pinkish, and, and uh, they look like the pictures. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you can actually bring up pictures and, and show it, but the thyroid is part of the endocrine system. Mm-hmm. In the endocrine system, there are two systems that control the rest of the body. Uh, the nervous system, uh, and then also the endocrine system. And as I tell the patients, those are the two things that we need to get fixed first. Mm-hmm. You have to have a proper proper functioning nervous system and a proper functioning endocrine system to be healthy. And the thyroid is sort of the, the workhorse of, of the endocrine system. It tells the body more what to do than any other portion of the endocrine system. Mm-hmm. And there are so many different types of uh, uh, roles that the thyroid plays that if that goes off, it's very difficult to be healthy. And many of the problems that we see in patients once we get the thyroid balanced out, a lot of the issues start to clear up. Interesting. Well, where is it located? It's located in the throat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in the front of the throat, and it's shaped like a butterfly. Ah. So one of the things that I do is we do an examination on all patients, Mm -hmm. and you shouldn't be able to see or palpate the thyroid. I know a lot of times we'll, you know, be watching TV or something, and you'll say, that person has a thyroid, and you haven't even touched them. Yeah, thyroid thyroid issue. issue, right. It, it's many a times that I'm just talking to the patient and they're describing some of their, their symptoms. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at them and, and I can see their thyroid. Mm-hmm. And I say, well, you know, I already know what one of the major issues is, is that your thyroid's not functioning properly. Mm-hmm. What happens is if the thyroid is under stress, uh, it starts to uh, swell, uh, increase its, its function because it's trying to make up for the in, insufficiency or the overactivity. So the thyroid will uh, change shape, will actually enlarge. Uh, You can actually get uh, a goiter that can occur with that, Uh, or you can uh, get nodules in that too. That would also be a sign that the thyroid is under stress. Aren't we the goiter capital of the world? Yes, uh, the Midwest is. Actually, Wisconsin is the worst. Okay. But Indiana is one of the top five uh, on uh, low iodine. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason, that's one of the essential nutrients, though, that there are many other nutrients that are involved with the thyroid. The iodine deficiency is one of the common things that we look for because if you don't have enough iodine, your thyroid can't work properly. Mm-hmm. So, and so we in the Midwest don't have enough iodine in our soil? Is we don't have enough iodine in our soil. Mm-hmm. So, you know, getting, that's one of the reasons that they started to uh, normally add iodine to salt. Mm-hmm. Uh, if a uh, chronic type of, um, of iodine deficiency results in creatinism, uh, in it is very essential for uh, normal function, uh, d- brain development. Mm-hmm. So you can be a little slow mm-hmm. if you don't have enough iodine because of the effect of the thyroid on the rest of the system. Uh, so it's, it's a very, very important type of thing to, uh, you know, one, uh, check out, and as I tell a lot of people, because it, it's interesting, people come in, uh, they have a palpable thyroid, you can see it, uh-huh. and uh, people, uh, you know, and their doctor's been telling them that it's fine. Mm-hmm. And you can see it. Right, and it's, uh, it's not fine. Mm-hmm. It's not functioning properly if you can see it and palpate it. Right. You know, that's a, that's a dead giveaway. It's mm-hmm. just that it's not being evaluated properly. Okay, and we're going to talk more about that. But let's talk about what is the role um, of the thyroid. Well, the thyroid has a lot of uh, functions. Uh, it, uh, it, one of the common things that people uh, have, you know, the, that women complain of when they have thyroid problems is, I'm losing hair. Oh, uh-huh. So hair loss is one of the common things that occur, and that's one of the, the 
one of the things that people come in with uh, with problems. Uh, nails also are affected by that. Mm-hmm. Uh, putting on weight, mm-hmm. uh, you're, it controls your metabolism, either being too heavy or too skinny. Mm-hmm. Uh, with a uh, with a hypothyroid, uh, you know, usually you put on weight. There are a f- few exceptions on that. Hypo. Hypo. Uh-huh. Uh, hyperthyroid, you usually think about losing weight, but about 30% of the people actually gain weight with a hyperthyroid situation. Mm-hmm. When you eat like a dozen donuts when you had a hyperthyroid, <laughs> yeah. you were, your uh, metabolism. When I, yeah, my metabolism was out the roof, and uh, guys in college would come down just to watch me eat because mm-hmm. I was so skinny, and yet I could put away everything. Yeah. Um, so, you know, but it's... But you felt awful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you know it's it's a it controls your metabolism, uh, constipation, mm-hmm. uh, diarrhea. Uh, so how the bowels move is is a big part of that. Your skin, uh, your heart, your blood pressure, uh, your cholesterol levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, many times uh, people are coming in on cholesterol medicine, and uh, what they do is they have a hypothyroid. You know, so there are so many different types of aspects of the general health and well-being that is controlled by the thyroid. Matter of fact, there's almost nothing that isn't affected by the thyroid, mm. including brain activity. Uh, many times, uh, you know, not uh, being able to think clearly mm-hmm. has a lot to do with the thyroid. And in matter of fact, even IQ is controlled a lot by the thyroid. Interesting. Okay, when we come back, let's talk about how often should we get our thyroid checked. You can win a free 60-minute massage in a relaxing spa at the Prather Practice. Each month, we have a drawing to give away a free massage to one of our lucky Facebook and Twitter fans. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. Congratulations to Lisa, one of our Facebook followers, who won a free 60-minute massage in her October drawing. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. What advice do you have for someone out there who has a goal of losing weight? Well, I think having a clear goal on what you're trying to achieve is very important. And not just to think about weight loss in and of itself, but also just getting healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, it it's, should be a full package that you're trying to uh, actually achieve because there are some very effective means out there of just dropping pounds. Right. But oftentimes when that can occur, you actually lose muscle or, mm-hmm. or organ mass or other different types of things that's actually going to put you into a worse position than what you were before. Uh, most people after that actually diet, Mm -hmm. you know, that do regular weight loss type programs, wind up in five years worse off than if they had never done anything. And that's, that's, you know, that's the fault of the educator or the doctor who's actually supervising that. Mm -hmm. So what we are uh, really looking to do is to truly lose the fat percentage, change the metabolism of the body, and uh, make this more of a permanent and a healthy type of a weight loss where you're actually losing the fat, not just losing weight, mm-hmm. and then also getting the, ba- the body balanced so it can maintain that. Right. So, and, yeah, and I like what you said, not just a goal of a number or, you know, weight, but a goal like um, some of these clients that we've had with the weight loss program they wanted to be able to play with their grandchildren or they wanted to be able to get back into their biking again sure. you know those kind of goals though um also you know besides yeah and, and goals are very important and having the habits uh one of the things that always when you have weight loss is you need a coach mm-hmm. you know you need help on those types of things anyone who's going into something like this Trying to do that on your own is is a very difficult type of thing. In our program, you have a weekly coaching meeting. And um, And also getting a thorough physical before you start. Mm -hmm. That's that's a very important type of thing. Get your blood work analyzed. Make sure that you actually know the the, uh, situation of your health before you start. 
And that's one of the things that we offer in our in our office, our, our combination of all those things. And that's why we have such a high success rate. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. We're talking this week about how 99% of us need a better functioning thyroid. People come in and you can even see it. Mm-hmm. Is it is it enlarged in the th- front of the throat area? It, yes, it, it becomes I'm enlarged. I'm learning from you because you'll see people <laughs> on TV and, or... <laughs> in different places, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like, wow, that person has a thyroid issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, y- you know, and oftentimes it's it's very obvious, and it can have a, a huge effect on, uh, again, on people's health. And any time that you can see the thyroid, uh, it, it's not pro- it's not functioning properly. Right, right. You know, and the people who come in here, uh, often 80% of them have had their because they felt that their thyroid was a problem. Had them checked. Had them checked, and they were told that they were normal. When uh, why is that? Are they? Is they're not doing the proper blood tests? They're not doing the proper blood tests. They're not reading them correctly. Okay. You know, blood tests are extremely accurate, but the numbers for the blood tests are, are very, very specific on what they should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and having an understanding of those, and then there are there are. Uh, 35 different blood tests you can do for the thyroid. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's an awful lot of different types of functions that they're looking at. And people, uh, one, uh, doctors aren't being specific enough on what the thyroid number should be. Uh, the American Thyroid Association has said that the numbers need to be much, much tighter than what they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, matter of fact, for the thyroid stimulating hormone, a perfect number on that is 2.5. And any deviation from that is is off. So the reference ranges. Uh, uh, the reference ranges. They're going by. Yeah, the reference <laughs> ranges are are just what the average, you know, what what are fifty percent of the people coming in mm-hmm. with uh, having their thyroid checked. Is that what the reference ranges? That's are? That's all the reference ranges. It's <laughs> nothing to do with homeostasis. Matter of fact, for some of the blood tests, the reference ranges aren't really in uh, what homeostasis is. Uh. There is there is a different type of a evaluation. There's reference range, and then there's homeos. What is a perfect homeostasis? Because it seems like a lot of doctors just go by those reference ranges. Yes, and that that is that is not what those reference ranges are for. Uh huh. The reference ranges are, you know, the labs aren't there to tell you what the blood work should be. Mm-hmm. They're just saying of the people who come in here, fifty percent of them have this number. I did not know that. Huh. So. Reference range has has nothing to do with where, you know, mm-hmm. you should be. Right. Has that? That's I know not you look way beyond them, and we right. tell people, you know, and they come in. Well, my doctor said, you know, this right. was normal, and and yeah. I say no, that's mm-hmm. that's not normal. That's why you have this this symptom, this symptom, this Sounds symptom. Sounds like they need new reference ranges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's not the lab's responsibility. responsibility. Right. You know, the the labs aren't, there are textbooks out there, uh, medical textbooks, that go into the homeostasis and what those numbers should be. Mm-hmm. And to be accurate on this, you, you need to know what those are. Right. And the vast majority of doctors do not. Mm-hmm. Uh, I even find endocrinologists mm-hmm. uh, not reading lab tests properly. Mm-hmm. to really understand where that should be because when we get people into homeostasis range, mm-hmm. their symptoms go away. Mm-hmm. In other mm-hmm. words, that's where they go, oh, wow, I feel really great. Mm-hmm. My hair's not falling out anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my vision has improved. My skin is better. My digestion is better. My immune system is working better. Mm. Uh, all the different things that I was complaining about are all of a sudden now working properly, and that's because they are in the range that I tell them that they should be in. Right. 
because those are the proper ranges that needed, need to be there. The blood works are extremely accurate. Mm-hmm. It's just that the interpretation, or they're not being done. Oftentimes, they, they do one blood test for the thyroid, and you can't tell anything mm-hmm. off of that. So what are they missing well, that you not, include? They're not doing enough blood tests. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, which blood tests you do, we do a basic panel on that. A thyroid panel. Right. We do a, a TSH, a, a T4 total, uh, and a T3 uptake. Uh, those are the basic things that we do. And according to that, then we go on ahead and do other blood tests. We might do, uh, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of different blood the tests. there's the autoimmune. Yes, thing. there's an autoimmune panel if we have a suspicion that there is an autoimmune disease. It's one of the things that you have to determine as you're dealing with the thyroid. Is it just a hypothyroid, a hyperthyroid, or is it an autoimmune thyroid? which is treated differently, or is it a U-thyroid? A U? Yeah, a <laughs> EU oh, thyroid. Okay. And what that means is, I don't know what the heck it is. <laughs> it's just crazy. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I get right. people in here where it's just like, it's not hypo, it's not hyper, it's not autoimmune, it's just it's just gone nuts. You can't call it a nuts. You, call you it can't a call it a nuts. You call it a euthyroid. <laughs> okay. And uh, I get those in here, and uh, we have, uh, you know, several times uh, we've got, especially young ladies, we have euthyroids. That's where it's most common. Young women? Yeah, mm-hmm. young women. And they feel like they're nuts. Yeah. Uh, and their endocrine system is nuts. Mm-hmm. It's it's not that they're nuts. It's that their endocrine system is nuts. <laughs> uh-huh. And then once we can start to balance that out first, then all of a sudden things get into line. And then mm. we can say, oh, okay, now it's a hyper or a hypo. You know, it's it's actually treatable at this point. Mm-hmm. But we have to balance that out It's first. just going all over the place. It's going all over the place. It makes no sense whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it gets rather interesting. And we tell them, okay, this is going to be a little bit of a work. Mm-hmm you know, to get this right. And once we start to get it right, there, there's a huge difference in, in uh, um, you know, personality, mm-hmm. in how they feel. Think, how they think. How they think. Uh, it, you know, there are so many different types of things. Uh, 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 a imbalanced thyroid is one of the leading cause of infertility. Really? Wow. Yes, that's, that's really, and, and many times when we find couple, couples coming in and they're dealing with infertility problems, mm-hmm. it's because they, uh, one or the other has a thyroid problem that causes infertility both in males and females. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also have situations with the uh, thyroid uh, uh, menopause. The reason that many times menopause is so difficult mm-hmm. is because the hormones of the, of the uh, ovaries and uterus that you know, we're producing are taken over by the thyroid at that point. Oh. The thyroid's not able to kick in on that. Thyroid and adrenals are actually involved in that. The thyroid isn't properly functioning, then you don't have that smooth transition. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that smooth transition, uh, you get hot flashes, you get very uncomfortable. Life is not too fun at that point. Yeah, you're helping me with that transition right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it works, doesn't uh-huh. it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're regulating. We're using some herbals to mm-hmm. regulate uh, your thyroid is what I'm concentrating on. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, it uh, you know, you take your supplements and, and the hot flashes. If you miss them a day, what happens? Oh, yeah. Not, yeah. go- not good. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, it helps with the transition. Right. So the body, and that's why women have more problems with the thyroid than the men. Mm-hmm. is women are constantly going through a transition through their life. Mm-hmm. Being able to produce babies, mm-hmm. uh, you have to have a regulation of your th- of your horm- endocrine system. There's more stress on a woman's endocrine system there is on a man's. Mm-hmm. Men are kind of simple. Uh-huh. You are simple. You know, we have one basic use, <laughs> and that's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> women are, are more complicated. They're, it's it's not easy going through that cycle, and so there's more stress on the endocrine system. That's why women show up more of a problem. Yeah, I hear, you know, women at my age, some just, you know, their family's saying, um, I know someone right now, 
saying my mom has just gone crazy and sure. um, she's not talking to my brother right now. You know, there's some the conflicts start. Mm-hmm. And a lot of this could be just an imbalance, right, it, of the endocrine system. Almost always that type of a personality change is as they are going through, their system has to shift. And if the thyroid's not up to par, that type of shift doesn't occur very smoothly. And there is a huge amount of hormonal changes. It changes one's personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can just get that balanced out, usually it originates at the thyroid. Uh, It's like, oh, uh, and I've had this so many times. Uh, I've got my mom back. I've got my wife back. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, they they sit there and say, wow, I feel like I'm myself again. Yeah, yeah. Neat. Now, let's get back to the question I said before we went to break. <laughs> right. get, but how often should a person get their thyroid checked? At least once a year. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's for everyone. I mean, even for kids uh, should get their thyroid checked. Matter of fact, one of the things that is recommended is that babies should have a thyroid panel done. Wow. Okay. Uh, pregnant moms especially should have a very thorough evaluation. Or if you're thinking about getting pregnant... Uh, because mm-hmm. that's going to determine a lot of the health of the baby mm-hmm. and also will determine whether the intelligence of the baby and uh, their general development. Wow. Because if that's off, then you're going to have children with uh, uh, de- depleted IQs. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. so the intelligence is, is very dependent on the thyroid function. Mm-hmm. And as you are working with children, uh, if you can catch something early and if there's some type of deficiency going on there, uh, y- you know, that can determine so much throughout the rest of their life. Yeah. Well, I want to make sure you were able to you answer this question partly in the last segment, but what problems can the thyroid have? Uh, there are, of course, we went through, you know, there's hypo, hyper, euthyroid, which is the crazy thyroid. Mm-hmm. You can also have autoimmune thyroids, uh, Hashimoto's, uh, Graves' disease are the two most common. Hashimoto's is, it creates a hypothyroid situation. Graves' disease causes a hyperthyroid condition. Uh, both of those are autoimmune, which is uh, needs to be approached in a different type of way. Uh, but you can also have some nutritional deficiencies that occurred. You can have a thyroiditis, which is common as a postpartum situation. Uh, where that really, you know, can throw things off quite quite severely that needs to be recognized. And there's a lot of women who have postpartum depression where it's an inflamed thyroid, mm. which needs to be treated differently. And then you can also have thyroid cancer, mm-hmm. uh, which is, uh, it is important to recognize at an early stage. Uh, it is a very treatable thyroid because it uh, can't type of cancer because it's a slow growing. Okay. But uh, we have some very very good cases along those lines where uh, that can be really really helped naturally. Okay. When we come back, let's talk about how the thyroid is treated. Listen to the Voice of Health Radio on your smartphone or tablet on all of the top radio apps available. Tune in Radio, Stitcher, and iHeart Radio. You can find these apps and more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. Laughter is the best medicine. People say there's pressure to be thin. I think there's pressure to eat. I went to this Texas Roadhouse Saloon thing, and they give all the big stakes manly names, you know, to play on your manhood. They're like, try the wild steer for the manly appetite. For the man that can go all night long. You'll be going all night, but (laughs) not the way they're implying, I think. And then the smaller steaks have more feminine names, like the Queen's Cut. And that's still like 12 ounces. I'm like, do you have anything smaller than the Queen's Cut? Waiter's like, yeah, maybe you'd like the mama's boy. (laughs) I'm like, just bring me the Richard Simmons. (laughs) And a side of painful gym class memories. Are you frustrated by not getting to the root cause of your health issue? Are you tired of not knowing why you're always fatigued? Are you wanting to say no to toxic drugs? Have you lost hope? Are you just tired of being sick and tired? At the Prather Practice, we want you to know that we have the answers for you. We offer the alternative to the disease care model. We are the drug-free model to health and wellness. 
At the Prather Practice, we look for the underlying cause of your health problem and not just the symptomatology. Through thorough diagnostics, we find your individual health blueprint for your treatment. Where the disease care model is symptom-based, the structure function model we practice gets to the root of your health issue. The Prather Practice is the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. Our integrated practice offers you the most treatment options to restore your health and your hope. Learn more about the Prather Practice by calling 317-848-8048 or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. Lisa Prather, and you're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where we get to the root cause of your health issue. We're talking this week about how 99% of us need a better functioning thyroid. I had this visual the last segment we did. You said, when a, um, what's the thyroid that goes crazy? Euthyroid. Euthyroid. Yeah. You said when a euthyroid walks in, so I'm picturing this thyroid walking in to the <laughs> <laughs> Did you say it looks like a butterfly? Uh, yeah, well, it's shaped like a butterfly. <laughs> With little legs. When yeah. the youth I ride, when the youth I ride walks in. <laughs> All right. Well, how, uh, Dr. Prather, how is the thyroid treated? I, there are, of course, the most common way is, you know, the hypothyroid uh, taking a, um, a synthroid type of product. Mm-hmm. Several out there. Uh, for the uh, hyperthyroid, uh, you can do several different things. There are medications for it. Uh, there are also uh, ways to uh, kill part of the thyroid, either through surgery or, or taking um, some radioactive iodine. Uh, so there are different ways of, of doing that. Uh, but all of those have uh, mm, so-so. Why well, wasn't that one... Um that was recommended for you, a medication, and here you're a young adult and you look it up, right? Yeah, all the possible side effects, and uh, it, it was like, oh my gosh, yeah, uh, it doesn't sound like a really good option for me. You know, it's not what, what I really wanted to achieve. Mm-hmm. Um, for the, uh, you know, for the uh, synthroid, you know, the artificial thyroid, there's an awful lot of problems uh, that the FDA has actually published. Mm-hmm. Uh, matter of fact, 80% of everyone who is on synthroid uh, develops uh, depression. Mm-hmm. And there are definite things that occur, uh, you know, for the problems that are associated with that. Uh, it's not really in uh, everything that I've seen and the results on the patients. Uh, I have people who come in on, on uh, synthroid Say my doctor says it's fine, I still feel terrible. Mm-hmm. And as we evaluate it, uh, we feel that, the, you know, well, there's a lot better ways of actually approaching it or adding some things to the synthroid to make that successful, mm-hmm. to get the, uh, the uh, balance in there and get the optimal performance out of the endocrine system. Because there are damages that occur with each, each one of those different types of options. Now, um, uh, we definitely treat it differently. Well, how successful are thyroid treatments? Well, if you're really looking at it and being honest, the medical treatments on the thyroid uh, aren't successful. Mm-hmm. The uh, you know it's not really a fine tuning. Uh, they're not really designed to fix the thyroid. Uh, basically, once you're on thyroid medication, they tell you that you're on it forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is actually true because there's some damages that occurred. And uh, then there's actually other endocrine portions of the endocrine system that are damaged along with that. Uh, so I would say that uh, the approach from the normal type of medical type of approach is, is not successful. Mm-hmm. And the people that I know that are uh, the experts on it that are pretty honest would agree Mm-hmm. you know, that they really aren't that successful. So how um, is the thyroid treated at the Prather practice? Well, what we're looking at the to, for the thyroid is actually fixing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, our goal is to get the thyroid functioning on its own, uh, you know, so that uh, it's actually, uh, you know, no longer needs any types of treatment. Mm-hmm. And that's really what you're going for. 
Right. You know, that's what I would consider a successful treatment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in our office, that's what we're trying to accomplish, and there are ways to do that. Uh, there are different herbals. There are different uh, glandulars mm-hmm. uh, that you can use to give the proper nutrients so that the thyroid can uh, function properly. And as you can do those over a period of time, uh, then you can uh, stimulate the thyroid to actually uh, uh, function properly. Mm. Uh, You can do that uh, through nutritional. There's 35 different nutrients that are necessary for the thyroid to function properly. Wow, 35. 35. Uh, Mm -hmm. One of the most important, of course, is iodine. Mm -hmm. And iodine uh, can be checked through a blood test. Uh, you can also see how it's uh, being utilized. Uh, there are different types of blood tests to, to see how that's actually progressing on its utilization because there can be some nutrients that can keep that from uh, from properly functioning. Mm-hmm. So looking at that whole pattern on that, uh, you can come up with uh, the nutritional needs. Uh, you can do some natural um, uh, organ uh, mm-hmm. Type of uh, we use nature thyroid in our office because it doesn't damage the thyroid. It provides all the nutrients that are necessary, uh, and you can uh, still heal the thyroid. It doesn't damage the thyroid. Hmm. So uh, we find very good success. We used to use Armor, but uh, the formula has been changed on that, so we no longer use Armor as as our mm-hmm. uh, means of of working with the thyroid. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are um, uh, different types of, uh, of products, uh, homeopathic herbals that can help to reduce the function of a hyperthyroid. There are products that can be used to stimulate the thyroid that are extremely effective mm-hmm. uh, without, being, without damaging and then being able to get the thyroid starting to function normally. So it's very individualized. It's very the, individualized. Mm-hmm. Some patient might need an herbal or some uh, homeopathic works better for them. There are many different ways to uh, find out uh, how to stimulate the thyroid to get it working back, and those are hyper-hypo. Uh, of course, when you're talking about uh, an autoimmune thyroid, mm-hmm. that's treated completely different mm-hmm. because that is, a, uh, that is a situation where the immune system has been compromised and then the immune system is either attacking the thyroid itself or it's uh, producing immunoglobulins that imitate thyroid-stimulating hormone mm. uh, with the uh, Graves' disease. Mm-hmm. And uh, you need to look at uh, getting the immune system settled down to really get those under control. Mm-hmm. And uh, the m- 80% of the immune system is around the gut, so looking at the gut is one of the main areas, but there's other different things that can kick that off. There can be infections. There can be a, uh, a lot of different types of things that can kick off an autoimmune thyroid. Mm-hmm. So getting the immune system settled down is the way that we approach it on that. What is the success of your thyroid treatment? We have an extremely high success rate. Mm. Uh, for those patients that are compliant with the treatment, uh, uh, we, we have a, a very, very high percentage. Um, y- you know, it's, it's over 90%. Why is that? Uh, it's the thoroughness. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's the uh, extreme uh, accuracy that we use for diagnostics. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a diplomat American Board of Chiropractic Internists, which basically we study diagnostics for three years. Mm-hmm. So I have over 600 hours of reading blood tests to interpret what's going on. And in any type of a situation, you have to understand what's happening to be able to uh, make uh, the proper changes. Mm -hmm. And then also a good understanding of the nutritional and the herbal effects on uh, the thyroid and also uh, uh, being able to regulate uh, all the different types of uh, endocrine system. One of the things that you can do is you can actually give thymus glandular, Mm -hmm. and thymus glandular actually sedates the thyroid. Hmm. So you can actually reduce the functioning of the thyroid by giving thymus. Hmm. So, Interesting. you know, there's a lot of different types of complications that you can, you know, mm-hmm. uh, make. A, a, a very common type form of, of hypothyroidism is secondary hypothyroidism, which comes from a poorly functioning pituitary hypothalamus. Hmm. 
Hmm. So understanding all those different types of aspects. It's complicated. Yeah, it becomes very complicated. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, uh, there are many different homeopathics. There are some flower remedies that have a huge effect on the thyroid. Mm -hmm. So having a a good understanding of that uh, is very important. Okay. When we come back, let's talk about diagnosing thyroid issues and dietary changes that can help with thyroid health. Never miss an episode of The Voice of Health so that you can stay informed and empowered about your health. Get a podcast of our show automatically delivered to you every week by signing up for our show on iTunes. You can find that link on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. And don't forget, thevoiceofhealthradio.com has complete archives of all of our past episodes with an audio library of information to help you add more life to your years and more years to your life. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. I consider the blood work to be the blueprint to your health. And we've had several different radio programs on that and talked about how important it is to have a at least a yearly uh, complete blood test to find out where you are. Uh, it, the blood is the life force of the body. And it gives a, an amazing uh, chemical uh, picture of where you are with your health and can actually pick up all the different types of diseases that could be going on. So having a thorough blood test is one of the most important things and is recommended by everyone to make sure that your health is up to where it should be and can actually pick up any type of disease process before it becomes a, a major factor. So having a good blood test, a good thorough blood test, is one of the most important things that you can possibly have. Uh, One of the things that I implemented uh, when I started my practice was a blood test that uh, could actually cover any type of problem that was actually developed that someone could actually experience. So we came up with a profile, we gave it to the labs, but they said, wow, that's a pretty good profile. Uh, Do you mind if we offer that to uh, other people? And Mm -hmm. I said, uh, no, no, that would, that would be fine, you know, because I feel that that's, that's something that could be very useful. And uh, they named it the Prather Profile. (laughs) So I've actually met with uh, other doctors before and talked to them and said, you're Dr. Prather, are you the Prather of the Prather Profile? (laughs) And I said, yeah. Because, you know, they get a list of different profiles. And uh, so it's actually now a a, a national profile. Uh, So we actually have 52 different lab tests that are actually included in this profile. Uh, It covers everything from A to Z. In other words, any disease process that you could possibly have in your body, that will be covered by this particular blood test. So uh, it is something that uh, should be done by everyone from no matter how young you are to no matter how old you are, at least once a year to see what your health is. If you have a problem, this will actually pick it up. And one of the nice things about that is it is actually covered by insurance. So very excellent way of actually finding out where you are. And if there are any hidden types of problems that are going on, this will actually show it up. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where our mission is restoring hope to our patients. We're talking this week about how 99% of us need a better functioning thyroid. Dr. Prather, let's talk about how do you diagnose thyroid issues? Uh, The the thyroid, of course, is is, uh, very accurate on blood tests. One of the things that uh, some alternative health care practitioners have said, well, you know, the reason that we have problems with the thyroid and it's underdiagnosed is because the inaccuracy in the blood test. So they do, uh, you know, temperature, uh, there's all sorts of crazy tests out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, totally untrue. Uh, thyroid tests are extremely accurate on the blood test. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just that they just need to be read correctly. 
Okay. So okay. it's a matter of training on reading the blood tests. The blood tests are accurate. Uh, the only reason that uh, y- y- when you have balanced thyroid levels, you, you are balanced. Mm-hmm. All the symptoms go away. You feel he- great. So when you hit the numbers that I say that you're supposed to hit, you feel fantastic. Mm-hmm. If you are off, you don't feel well. So the blood work is extremely, extremely accurate. And there are so many different types of blood tests that you can really determine the nuances of the thyroid, too. Mm-hmm. So absolutely, blood test is the way to go. And you're talking about to really find out what's going on in the thyroid. You need a TSH, T4 total, T3 uptake. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and those are the basic. Those are just the basics. Those are just the basics. Mm -hmm. There are many other blood tests that need to be done on uh, how everything's processed, Uh, the the uh, the free thyroxin. Uh, There are so many different types of aspects of the thyroid that you need to check on. Mm -hmm. But that gives you a basis on whether there's actually a disease going on or an imbalance, and then you then decide which direction to go from there. Are these all included in the Prather profile? Those are included in the Prather profile. Okay, so when someone gets the overall blood work that we offer here, these are included. If there's issues here, then you go on to... Then I go on for specific types of tests after that, depending on which direction these show up. Because, again, this is just to guide me on how to do the further blood test to find out on the specifics. Okay. Are there specific numbers that you're looking for? There are absolutely specific numbers. Okay. Yes, the numbers are extremely important. Okay. What about hair analysis? How important is that in thyroid her, function? Hair analysis can be a really key for thyroid function. If you have mercury toxicity, lead toxicity, several other different types of toxicities along those lines, That's going to affect the thyroid, and you can't get the thyroid fixed unless those are fixed. Mm -hmm. So there can be toxins or an imbalance. An imbalance in the copper-zinc ratio has a huge effect on thyroid function. You have to get that balance to be able to get the thyroid functioning. Calcium-magnesium ratio is important. Mm -hmm. So there are many different types of factors in the hair analysis that are critical to be able to get the thyroid uh, where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Because the hair analysis is a mineral tissue. You can do blood minerals, which are important, Mm -hmm. but then you also have to see what are the minerals that are going on in the tissue level, too. Oh, okay. And the hair analysis is excellent for that. That's checking the tissue level. Tissue levels, which Mm -hmm. is different than the blood levels. Mm -hmm. We put those two together, and then you can actually see what the true levels of how the body's functioning together. Because I know the three major... um, three major diagnostics we like to do for overall health is our Prather profile blood work, the hair analysis, and then our GI effects to check the gut. Right. Well, let's talk about why is the gut important for the thyroid, the gut health? The gut health, uh, if you're talking about uh, especially autoimmune diseases, Mm -hmm. autoimmune, 80% of all autoimmune diseases start in the gut. The reason is, is 80% of of the immune systems around the gut. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it doesn't take a genius to figure that relationship out. And any time that you're talking about any autoimmune type of thyroid, we need to do an evaluation of the gut to see what's happening. Mm-hmm. So that's where that becomes critically important uh, to be able to find out how to get that, that autoimmune situation under control. Mm-hmm. So the gut is, is absolutely important. We're looking for a uh, possibility of, of food allergies. Mm-hmm. can kick that off uh, if there's any types of infections in through there. An increase in the immunoglobulins, uh, immunoglobulin A. Uh, if there's other different types of toxicities in there, you need to get those under control, and then you can uh, see a, a huge difference on any type of autoimmune situation. How about the role that food allergies play in in the thyroid? And we have some very good uh, tests on that uh, for food allergies. Now, you're not talking about anaphylactic types of reactions. Mm -hmm. That's an IgE blood test. But we're talking about other different types of sensitivities that are associated with that. And one of the best uh, tests along those lines is called an ALCOT. Mm Mm-hmm. And that gives us a very thorough picture of how the body's reacting and how to get that under control. 
Yeah, I've done that. It's a blood test. Blood test also. Correct, yeah. Um, comes back with a very thorough report of the foods that you're sensitive to and sure. how sensitive and, and then puts you on a rotation diet, which was very helpful. Very helpful. Yeah. Well, how important are dietary changes for thyroid health? It, the diet can play a very huge role, not only on food allergies, which need to be checked on, but there are different types of, uh, of foods that can actually cause thyroid problems. Mm. If you have a hypothyroid and you eat a lot of cruciferous vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, that is a uh, thy uh, that actually lowers the thyroid function. Ah. Uh, soy uh, has mm -hmm. a uh, has a lowering effect on on the thyroid. So if you have a hypo, you don't want wanting. to eat. Cru you do not want to eat cruciferous vegetables or soy or soy. Mm -hmm. uh, however, if you have a hyper then that's actually uh, helpful. Helpful. Mm -hmm. So, you know, understanding that relationship, there are certain types of foods that increase thyroid function, certain foods that decrease thyroid function. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we give a diet to people according to which way their thyroid has gone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, also, if you are low on your protein intake, uh, vegetarians uh, very often have a low thyroid-stimulating hormone because, which causes a secondary hypothyroidism because they don't have the enough amino acids to actually process. So we have to work with their diet mm -hmm. to get that functioning right. Uh, if you have too much iron, too little iron, that can affect the thyroid. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of variances on that. Mm -hmm. So understanding uh, diet is, is critical also to your thyroid health. So, you know... As the patient's being treated here, supplementation, but they're also going over dietary changes with them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very important. Can medications damage the thyroid? Yes. Matter of fact, there are certain medi medications that cause hyperthyroid and some cause hypothyroid or can kick off autoimmune diseases. My particular uh, Graves disease was actually kicked off by a uh, vaccination that I got. Mm. It was almost immediate uh, change. So there was an autoimmune reaction within my body that kicked off the whole thyroid stress. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you, if we're getting an autoimmune, we look for different types of, of medications that could kick it off. Infections could have kicked it off. Uh, and then when you're talking about a hypo or hyperthyroid, certain medications are known to, even aspirin has mm -hmm. an effect on the thyroid. Mm. Wow. So many times we see thyroid problems, and it has to do with a uh, with their medications that uh, uh, are causing uh, shifts. Mm -hmm. So even heart medications, uh, beta blockers are are very well known uh, hypothyroid uh, uh, causers. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> so it becomes again we need to have a full picture of of what they're taking. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to make sure we have enough time. Let's talk about, because I know for your instance, with your hyperthyroidism, yes. chiropractic played a big role in that. So what role does chiropractic play in thyroid health and acupuncture? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when you're talking about uh, what controls the endocrine system, what controls the thyroid, well, it's the nerves that go to it. Mm. So if you have some pinched nerves going to uh, in your cervical spine, uh, many times we can see after a chiropractic adjustment an immediate change on thyroid function. Mm. So in, oftentimes you can never really get the thyroid corrected until you can get the atlas C1, C2, C3 uh, have a, a direct correlation with the thyroid You're talking function. about the neck. So. Yeah, yeah, inside <laughs> the cervical spine. Uh -huh. uh, you know, the, there's a direct correlation between... Uh, a uh, chiropractic adjustment and uh, the function of the thyroid. Because that's when you started... Um, that had a huge effect, effect. on my thyroid. Mm -hmm. um, seeing the changes there. Sure. So um, yeah. chiropractic is very important. You also asked about acupuncture. Mm -hmm. There are very specific points on uh, the uh, meridian system for the thyroid. We can go in there and do different types of stimulation and we can see an immediate change on the thyroid again. Mm -hmm. So that's another way to get an effect on the thyroid that uh, is oftentimes missed. Right. Now, how about exercise? 
How can that help the thyroid? Well, exercise uh, is a, if you are hypothyroid, if you have a regular exercise program, that can actually help the function. Mm. Uh, exercise has a moderating effect on uh, the endocrine system, and you can you can actually get a lot of a, a balance just by doing uh, specific exercises. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, weight loss. Mm-hmm. You know, being uh, obese uh, will ca- ha- cause the thyroid to be suppressed because you increase the estrogen. I know some people that are on our weight loss program have decreased their thyroid medication. Uh, yeah, and as they add the supplementation, some have gone off their thyroid medication. And that's what we're looking for. So mm-hmm. exercise, uh, diet, all those things have a huge effect on your overall health and well-being. And that's what we do here at the Prather, Prather Practice, is look at people in a holistic manner. Well, thank you, Dr. Prather, for thyroid. Let's get it right. The Prather Practice is located at 8902 North Meridian Street on the north side of Indianapolis, just south of the I-465 loop. If we can help you to achieve better health, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with our office at 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Join us again here next week or anytime on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com for The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Prather Plan Weight Loss Program is safe, comprehensive, medically supervised, and designed just for you. Forget the trendy diets and instead start with a roadmap that actually resets your body's metabolism for optimal fat burning and increased energy. The Prather Plan has 6, 10, or 14-week programs with a proven record of success and with guaranteed weight loss. The Prather Plan is an individualized program that is tailored to your needs to create healthy new habits in your life. You'll receive support from a certified health counselor, a nutritionist, and an exercise physiologist for maximum results. Many weight loss programs can include unhealthy loss of muscle or organ weight. We target your ideal body fat percentage so you can lose body fat in a healthy way where the pounds stay off. Contact the Prather Practice today to schedule a consultation and create a healthier you. 317-848-8048 or on the web at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice. Restore Restoring hope.